Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted to our um, archive website um, afterwards for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where uh, you will find all of our archives. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, so so much your state library. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So we have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, historical societies, museums, uh, et cetera, so anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. We have book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show and do presentations about services and programs we offer here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers from um, all across the country. Uh, and that's what we have today with us. Um, there we go. It is Robin Newell. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Krista. And she is from just south of us here at the Emporia Public Library in Kansas. Uh, Robin used to be here in Nebraska previously. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, a long time. They still have family. And, huh? And they still have family there, so I'm, I'll am i be back. Oh, of course, yes. Um, and she is going to talk to us today about retirement, uh, what we all need to know to plan for a successful retirement, hopefully, at some point in our lives. <laughs> so I will hand it over to you, Robin, to take it away and tell us all about it. All right. Thank you very much. Um, just a little bit about um, the presentation. It came about, about um, during COVID about late 2020 um, when I started seeing a lot of our librarians um, retiring and I thought about this might be a really good um, conference presentation and a good time to start talking about retirement because I hadn't seen this just entire tier of, of uh, librarians of all different um, types retiring, academic, public, um, there just seemed to be a lot of people saying, okay, this seems to be a good time to um, retire. So I started um, started talking with people. Um, I talked with a lot of retirees and I'll mention some of those later. Um, and I also did some uh, did some reading and some literature review, but the really thing that really drove it forward for me was thinking about my husband's retirement and my retirement. So it is, Time to ease on down, ease on down the road. Now, if you're of a certain age, you'll recognize that song and you'll know why I used it. Um, because that's what this process is, is it? an ease on down, ease on down the road. Because you're going you're gonna to want to start that journey and you're going to want to take, um, take it slow and easy. Okay. And for whatever reason, we're not... We are not okay. Nope. Sorry. Hold on. No, okay. You should be able to just click on it to advance the slide. Yeah. Or right there. There, 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 there we, we go. go. So why should you retire? Um, and that's probably the biggest question. Um, again, I'm going to be telling you some of my personal information. I'll be talking about professional information, but why you should retire. Um, one of them is you're just done. Um, I've had a lot of experience with retirees. I watched my dad, who was a farmer in Nebraska, retire. I don't know. I got tired of counting. Uh, he retired from farming, and then he went back. And then he retired from from driving a truck for a farmer, and then he went, you know, he retired. And so, just a lot of different types of retirement. My mom was a school lunch lady for over 25 years, and she retired. She was done. I mean, she she just she just flat out said, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do anything for a while. She took up painting. 
Um, and she traveled the craft circuit in Nebraska for 15 years selling crafts and, and going to craft shows. And for somebody who never traveled, loved doing that. Um, so there's just a lot of different types of why you want to retire, but one of them is you're just done. Um, you're ready to let the reins go. You're ready for somebody else to take charge. You've lost your edge. You know, you, you just can kind of tell when you're not so much interested in going to conferences anymore. You're just not so much interested in um, what that newest technology trend is. And it's really good that you can recognize that in yourself and think about, you know, what does your next step need to be? Does your next step need to be to push yourself to develop as a professional? Or is it a time to turn a page and go somewhere else? And that, and that comes with knowing when to retire, but don't retire on the job. Um, I've seen individuals who, who really did lose their edge and didn't retire and just kind of hung on and hung on and hung on until, until it got kind of embarrassing uh, for their colleagues, it got embarrassing for their staff. Um, so don't retire on the job. Um, Another reason to retire is you've accomplished it all. Um, you've done what you wanted to do in your career. Uh, part of that uh, was a big uh, part of my decision to retire, um, which I'll be doing here at the end of this month. Um, I feel like I've had a wonderful career. I feel like I've accomplished what I wanted to do and I'm ready to do something else now. So for my, uh, for my director career, I am a library director. For my director career, I, I feel like I have made um, made the changes that I wanted to make and I can move on now. Congratulations so, to you to retiring, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Age is a huge part of this. Um, so I, I told you I'm gonna be giving you some, uh, some other experiences. I've, um, I've watched three husbands retire. Um, I've watched a husband retire at age 62 and he only lived eight more years. Um, so his time was short after retirement. Um, and that is something you really need to think about is, you know, what is your age? What are your family genetics? Um, another husband retired at 62 and he's now pushing 80 and he's doing, he's doing fine. Um, he retired at 62 because he was going to be dead at 63 uh, because of his family genetics and everything. So we really can't guess about that. But it is a good thing to, to take into consideration is what your age is um, and what your health is. Another part of COVID, um, and I think that that was, again, part of that COVID drive for a lot of uh, uh, librarians to retire, is they saw people's health really affected after they had had COVID, um, and, they, and they, if they were older, um, and that COVID effect was um, dramatic, they realized that they don't have all the time in the world, and as much as we would like to live forever, um, it's just not going to happen. Um, Again, age is something to think about uh, and whether the time is growing short for you. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. said, the, whole, the beginning of this, COVID has changed a lot for everybody, I think. It has, yeah, and, and again, uh, just a personal for me, um, we shut the library down, our library in Emporia on, on March 16th of 2020, and my husband went into the hospital for a surprise surgery on March 17th where they put in, uh, he had open heart surgery and they put in, uh, five bypasses and when when you have something like that happen when you have that covid stress and you have this health situation come up that you've mm -hmm. never had before and and again a, a, an individual who's 62 um, he'd already retired once he, was, he again went back to work um so that age and those the genetics and that health really make a difference um and the other other situations you want to do something new my husband retired my, after 39 years of teaching middle school <laughs> science and math. He, was, he, he wanted to do something new. So he drove, he drove a bus, a school bus, and he loved being with those kids. He still likes being with those kids. Um, so he, but he wanted to do something new. He didn't want to be back in the classroom. He didn't want to have to deal with the, the politics of administration. And, uh, and the bus bar seemed to, to work really well for him. So, Doing something new is definitely something to think about as far as why you want to retire. And then 
whose interest comes first? And I want to talk a little bit about this. You really need to think about um, yourself and your responsibility to yourself. They will find someone else to fill your position. Um, and that's okay. Don't ever think that um, you are irreplaceable. Um, a long time ago, one of my uh, great library mentors said, you know, think about sticking your finger in a glass and pulling it out and seeing how fast that that hole fills up with water because they will find somebody to fill your position. So although we like to think about ourselves as being irreplaceable, some of us do, there, there is always somebody that can replace you. And it may be more than one person. And I saw that happen in COVID uh, uh, with the COVID retirees too. We saw, uh, we saw positions uh, empty and they would hire two individuals. We saw positions empty and they would uh, rework the entire job descriptions. Um, so lots of changes with retirees. And I, and I wanna say that it's not just about, uh, retirement is not just about the individual that's retiring. Retiring affects the entire organization. Um, it affects uh, management, it affects the frontline staff, um, it affects your institutional knowledge. You've got somebody that's retiring that, that may have been there for 20 years or 10 years or even five years at this day, day and age. Um, so you're losing some institutional memory. I, I like to think about retirement in a holistic fashion in, in that everybody is touched um, by the person who's retiring. And that's why thinking about retirement is not just not for the retiree, but it's also for the other individuals that come into contact with that individual who is retiring. Um, and then the other, the last thing, why retire? You need that physical body to do some things. If you want to travel when you retire, um, if you want to, uh, you know, be able to go and see grandkids, if you want to be able to uh, do that world tour around the earth, um, you're going to need that physical body to do some of these things. So uh, that can be a very um, important reason to retire if you have some health problems. So when should you retire? Um, again, it's a very personal decision. Um, it's a decision that you make um, with lots of information. Um, and we'll talk about that just a little bit. Um, there's tons of resources out there for you, um, but it's a very personal decision um, when you retire. It's a decision you make with your, with your family support, with your colleagues support, um, but it's a decision that, that you have to make at some point. Um, again, your age comes into play, your social security situation, what does that look like? Are you, are you in a relationship? Are you married? Um, can you claim on your, your partner's social security? Um, do you retire when you're at the earliest social security age? Do you wait until 70 when you can get the most? There's just all of these moving parts um, and you should have a retirement plan. Now, somebody said, when should I start on retirement plan? Um, and I had this conversation back with a, um, another colleague when I was working in, in Papillion, Nebraska, who had just turned up 65 and was, and was retiring. And, and she's like, I don't understand why we don't talk more about retirement. It's like, it's like a, a little secret or something like that. Why, why we don't do more education about retirement? Why we, you know, why we aren't having programs about retirement in our libraries? You know, people can come together and talk about the, their social security and what would be best. And um, I know that there are some that's done, but I really don't think that we do enough of that. Um, so you should have a retirement plan, and that's a timeline, um, that's a financial plan, um, that's a future plan. Uh, and again, you'll need that physical body to do the things you want to do if you want to do, you know, go skiing. COVID really pushed the priority buttons for a lot of people. Again, um, like I said, this was this was driven uh, by COVID and, the, and just the, the tons of people that I saw retiring. And I will say to you right now, I'm just kind of starting to see that ease off a little bit. Um, I saw the most of them start um, again in late 2020 uh, and then through 2021 I just I just saw uh, a lot of leaders um, step away from their position so let's talk about retirement uh, you've heard of the five stages of grief well there are the five stages of retirement as well um, 
The first stage is pre-retirement. This is when you're gonna think about what your new life should look like and you wanna plan for it. Um, so use your imagination. It's a time of excitement and anticipation. You can, you can set and think about, you know, where do I want to live? Or what do I want to do? Do I need to buy a new car before I retire? Do I need to buy a new house? Do I need to move? Um, so this is a time for you to think about, um, about all the possibilities and dream, dream big. Um, there's, there's nothing you cannot do without the support of your family and, and your colleagues. So imagine your new life. Imagine what you want to do um, and then plan for it. It is a time of excitement and anticipation. And I think about this kind of like um, if you uh, are, are, are graduating from college or um, getting married or something like that. It's one of those life stages. So it's, it's a time of, of excitement pre-retirement. The second stage is full retirement. And, and this is when you, you're done. <laughs> um, and you've stepped away um, and you've separated. And it's, it's very liberating. It's kind of like a honeymoon. It's like you can do whatever you want. You're free um, to a certain degree. Uh, you can just feel the rains kind of fall away and hopefully the stress fall away uh, unless you pick up a different kind of stress. And um, it can last for one to two years. Uh, and it's a time of um, rest and relaxation. It's a time to change your routine if this is something that you want to do. Um, I, I'm having ongoing discussions right now with um, my husband who wakes up every morning at 5.30 and I would like to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's a time to change that, um, that routine if you want to change, um, change that routine. Uh, but think about what you want your full retirement to look like. So this fun, full retirement, happy time can last, okay, again, a couple of years. And then disenchantment can, can set in. The emotional high wears off. Um, you start kind of missing people. There's a sense of disappointment and disillusionment. Did I make the right decision? Um, for me right now, I'm retiring two years before I thought I would. Um, and I've got a little bit of that going on right now is like, am I making the right decision? And I expect to have some of that in a couple of years too, once once my honeymoon um, phase wears off of, of should I've gone two more years? Should I have, um, should, should have, would I? And, we, and I guess we, you know, we second guess ourselves all the time as humans, it's just something we do. Um, so. There is that, um, that possibility of a sense of disappointment and disillusionment. And then there's the downsides. Uh, something's missing. Um, I, I am the type A, I work a lot. I love what I do. I love my profession. I love the people I work with. I love, I'm a public librarian, so I love that excitement of coming to work every day and literally not knowing what's gonna walk through the door. Um, that to me is, part of why I like the profession, I, the people that I meet, the problems that they have that we're able to resolve, um, whether it's I can't print my bus pass or I've got cancer, what does this mean? Um, the ability to, to do that is going to leave. So I'm really missing that. And unless I fill that with something else that's gonna meet those needs, there will be something missing. Boredom can set in. Um, I've, I've seen I've seen one person who retired who turned to their computer and would get up in the uh, at like one o'clock in the afternoon and play computer games until three o'clock in the morning. Um, just bored, didn't have anything else to do. Um, felt very bad for that individual because they 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 weren't happy, but they didn't know what else to do. Um, loneliness can can creep in um, if you don't stay in touch with your friends and your colleagues. Luckily, we uh, we learned that through COVID that you don't always have to be face to face in person with people. Zoom has been wonderful uh, as far as uh, 
uh, and not just Zoom, but just the, the technology has been wonderful to stay in touch with family, to stay in touch with colleagues. And I, I, I know that COVID time for a lot of people was a very, very lonely time when they had to be quarantined. Um, our senior citizens really um, that were quarantined to their room really felt that loneliness uh, that we weren't able to come in and visit. Children were the same way. Grandparents couldn't visit their grandkids. Um, so that loneliness is, is something that you need to be aware of when it hits you that, yeah, it is just a normal part of, uh, of ret the retirement process. And then the feeling useless. It's like, well, you know, I'm not a teacher anymore. You know, what, what am I gonna do if I'm not a teacher anymore? Or, or I'm not a librarian anymore. What am I gonna do? Uh, well, again, you've, you've had a successful career. You've been working your entire life. Um, I will guarantee you that there is somebody that can use your skills and all you have to do is barely raise your hands and they will be coming to you um, and asking. Um, the fourth step is a period of uh, actual reorientation. And then this is the most challenging stage because you have to think about creating yourself anew. Um, you're going to be doing something different. And for instance, is like, I'm not going to be working necessarily in a library again, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be working in the library profession. I could be, I could be a, a consultant for public libraries. I can be um, a rep for Baker and Taylor. And I, sh I shouldn't have said Baker and Taylor, but um, I could be a rep for a book for a vendor, uh, a library vendor. Um, there's just lots of options. So, but it, you are going to have to create that new identity because what you did before is not necessarily something you will um, do in the future. And and for many of us, that's kind of a relief. Um, so. I love to volunteer and I'll be I'll be doing some volunteer work um, and I'm looking forward to doing something not necessarily in a library but for other organizations. Um, so think about what kind of identity you want to have in the future and then go about creating that. Um, the reorientation is going to help you um, provide a sense of closure. If you know that that's coming, if you know that you're going to have to think about um, creating a new identity, then you know that, they, that you're going to have to think about um, being done with working days. Now, that doesn't mean you sit all day long. <laughs> it just means from working in your, your, your field maybe or uh, working in your profession, uh, but there's gonna be a sense of closure. Uh, and, and you have to be okay with letting that door close and, and you'll again you'll find out that there will be many other doors that will open to you as a retiree and this is time to find something that gives you a sense of meaningful purpose you want to pursue a passion volunteer and add new fun activities or you might want to go back to work to do something completely different you might want to work in a, um, a customer service position somewhere else or um, uh, in office or part-time doing part-time doing whatever uh, but again, that's the opportunities that retirees have right now. And of course, with the baby boomers retiring and everything, there's lots of um, lots of opportunities uh, for those people to be employed um, in a part-time fashion. The last um, step in retirement is reconciliation and stability. This could start um, up to 15 years after the official start of your retirement. Uh, I saw this with my mom. Um, like I said, she was a school lunch lady. She did that for over 25 years, and then she retired and, and took up this painting craft thing that she was very successful with. Um, and she did that for about 15 years. Uh, and then uh, her health caught up with her and with my dad, who also traveled with her and they had to quit traveling. Um, and so it was almost 15 years after the official start of her retirement that she really, um, uh, I don't wanna say hit the wall, but um, it was kind of like hitting the wall when she couldn't, when she couldn't travel anymore. 
Um, but that's when that stability took over and she, um, she found another, um, another way to fill her um, volunteer hours and, and to do something with crafts and to be able to paint. Um, and she still paints, paints today. She's 90, by the way, lives by herself and still drives, which is kind of scary, but um, wow. yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> um, and she's in Nebraska. Um, so, but again, this, this is a process. It is not, it's not like uh, on September 30th, I've retired, I'm done, you know, this is a journey, this is a process. Um, and it will continue after um, after that last day of retirement. So you're going to settle into a fun and rewarding retirement lifestyle, whatever that looks like to you, because you get to make the choices now. Um, and I just want to reiterate that after I told you the story about the individual who was so unhappy and bored. It's like you're making the choices. Nobody else is your boss. Um, yeah. You know, unless you're in a relationship and you have to do that kind <laughs> of stuff. But um, yes, yeah. I mean, I think that's something that's hard for some people to adjust to. They've always had some some place or someone telling them, "Here's what your day is now. Here's what you do with yourself from like the first time you start preschool all the way until you retire." And now you get to decide. And sometimes I think that's hard to like, how do I decide to do with it? Yeah, what, what do, do I do now? Yeah, um, and it's and it's not only it's not just the partner. Um, what we're seeing is a lot of retirees are taking care of grandkids. Um, right. And we are also seeing a lot of retirees who, who right now, before they're retired, they may be caregivers for their parent. They may be living with a mother or a father and being the caregiver. And, uh, and going to work is a, um, a, a, you know, is, is a place, like you said, for them to go outside the home. And when they retire and they're there all day long, it's a completely different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So the choices are yours, though. Um, we have so many, like I said, so many resources in our world today as far as um, uh, options for um, caregiving um, and that type of thing that um, those choices to settle into a fun and rewarding retirement lifestyle are yours, um, unless you're married <laughs> and, and, or in a, in a relationship or in a partnership. Uh, anyway, you want to really focus on maintaining your health and independence during that time. Um, and, and again, this can start up to 15 years after your official start of retirement. Um, I've seen it happen um, in a lot of cases the, the next month after <laughs> where, where they realize that because they've moved, they have to get new doctors um, or, you know, lots of different things have or they've moved into another area. Um, they've moved out of their three-story Victorian home into a ranch style, so they can be much more independent now. They don't need to have the help cleaning the house uh, like they used to have to pay for. So there's just a lot of a lot of questions and a lot of um, uh, again decisions to be made. So how to retire? Um, this is, we're going to talk about the workplace now. And I'll just remind so, everybody, since we're about halfway through the um, officially time today, um, if you do have any questions, comments, uh, thoughts on this, um, on what Robin's talking about, go ahead and type into your questions section and um, uh, we can um, answer them. And... All right. So we're going to talk about how to retire and we're going to talk about the workplace first. So you're going to give your notice. Is your notice firm or is it flexible? Um, are you are you going to be done on December 30th period, or is there a possibility that you could be flexible and work until they transition somebody into your um, into your position? Um, be very careful um, with that transition situation. Make sure that you're going to be available um, as you as you go forward. Um, so, but those are two those are two negotiables for you. Is your is it going to be a done done, or is it going to be hey you know I I can. I can work till I can train somebody else. Ask what the workplace needs. Do they need overlap? Do they need an interim? And then once you find that out, what's gonna work the best for you? Because you have to stay true to yourself. There should be a succession plan. If you don't have a succession plan or a succession policy, um, you need one. And I will be sending that to Krista to, uh, put out there on that magic archives place that she said she has, I will send you a, a succession plan that you can look at. Um, we have one in Emporia. Um, succession plans are wonderful. 
you know their plans, so um, it can it can change it at the drop of a hat. And that's what happened with us. We had a wonderful succession plan. We all had it all in place. Um, and then for my retirement, our uh, assistant director left in November of last year, and that you know that everything went out the window, and we had to start over with a, a new uh, succession plan. But because the staff know um, who the manager in charge will be, it really helps um, alleviate some of the stress. You want to prepare your board for your retirement too. Um, the Kansas Trustee Manual is out there on the web, um, the 2020 Kansas Trustee Manual. I would, um, if you have never seen how to prepare a public library board for uh, uh, a director leaving, uh, it's a really good um, board resource. And I would um, strongly suggest you talk to your board president if you're a library director or your supervisor. Um, if you have a firm retirement date, um, you need to, to kind of start having that that discussions um, that discussion with them or your HR department or whoever it is you you talk with. Um, but you you do need to have that discussion so that the board can prepare, uh, especially in a public library with a director situation, to prepare to hire someone else. Um, I'm going to mention this just a little bit because it's kept coming up with my uh, with my discussions of directors who had retired. Um, when you retire, you just need to step away for a while. Um, the comments that I were ha was having from um, directors who had retired was that they'd heard a lot of a, a lot of unpleasant stories about directors who retired and then you know wanted to not turn their key in. Uh, they really wanted to come back in the building and shelf books. They really wanted to come back in the building and you know look in the staff area. So they really wanted to be on the library board. They really wanted to be on the friends of the library board. Um, mm -hmm. So there needs to be a little bit of space there um, for that next director that's coming in or for that next staff person that's coming in. So there, there, is, um, there is great orientation ability. There's great um, uh, training ability there for, the, uh, for that relationship. But the, the you can't turn it loose um, is not a helpful situation. So that's that's a how to retire workplace hint is to mm -hmm. step away. It sounds like it may possibly be people who were maybe really not not ready to retire even though they thought they were. That's correct. Or they yeah. wanted to retire and wanted to, to come in and be able to do what they wanted to do when they weren't the director. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's how to retire personal. Um, you need to have a financial planner. Um, start early. I mean, if you don't already have a financial planner and you're you're um, over 55, I would I would really suggest that you start looking for one. Make sure that you get somebody that's licensed um, and knows what. Oops, lost it. Knows what they're doing. Um, so this says retirement finances. Um, now, your financial planner, you can talk about your personal finances and your um, a little bit about Social Security and how, how should I invest my money um, early on. Uh, but you, you should really look at your retirement finances. And depending on what state you're in, you're going to have a completely different uh, retirement system than we have in Kansas. So when I say CAPERS, that's our Kansas Public Employee Retirement System. Um, so just just think about this in your own um, in your own retirement system. If you have one, you need to check for your dates as far as when you can retire, how you can retire. Um, do you have to give 60 days notice? What happens after you retire? Um, Kansas has a very interesting situation where um, when I retire, I can't I can't work for my library or talk with my library for 60 days. Um, for teachers who are also under CAPERS, it's 120 days. So that's Kansas. I don't know what there is in Nebraska or other states, but I highly recommend that you check your retirement um, dates. And this is for your, um, your retirement plans, not Social Security or Medicare, that type. Of, this is the retirement finance. And then make sure you sign up for Medicare. And I've got, it's a mystery because, oh my gosh. Um, oh my gosh. And you know, many of us are learned people and 
Medicare. I started with Medicare uh, with my mom and dad back in the um, uh, in the 90s um, when they retired the first time, and I I was just amazed that they were expecting. Um, yeah, it's just a lot. Um, it's a lot of different. Um, a different mi missing pieces and it's medicare part alphabet soup there's medicare part a there's medicare part b there's medicare part d um you know and, and and you will learn that but again start now because when you sign up um it's it, it's interesting even even to the point where um you can sign up and think that you've done exactly what you were supposed to do and it's wrong and you call in and they they say yeah i see where you signed up for this date but for whatever reason it's wrong <laughs> um so start early make sure you understand medicare um, the different parts of medicare and when you have to sign up for medicare because they do um they will uh fine you and penalize you and this is national this is um, this is for everybody they will if you don't sign up at the right time for the right part um, they can find you for the rest of your life. Social Security is, is another one. Um, I feel like Social Security is a little bit easier to understand than Medicare um, because there seems to be less, less pieces to it. Um, there's not that alphabet soup. But you do need to, to look at your Social Security, uh, have a Social Security account. Make sure you're going in there and checking that every year um, to see where you stand. Um, no. Again, if you are retiring on a certain date, know what you're supposed to get on that date um, and check in and be savvy uh, as far as, you know, if you work X amount of years, um, you'll get so much money uh, more. Um, and then there's a way to figure out um, uh, when the best day, date is to, um, to retire for you as far as when, uh, it is usually 70s is when that max is out so do do look at your social security if you if you haven't gone to socialsecurity.gov yet um, go there and get an account set up and then be checking that in every year um, succession planning again um, i will send you a succession plan it relieves anxiety um, it's plan it's a plan for who is next um, it helps you develop staff talent and cross train, and it's a plan to plan. Um, it says Hoover, but I forgot to take that off. But I will send the sample succession to policy to Krista, and she'll put it up on the archive page. Um, and then get started today. Don't put that off. Don't think um, I'm not going to retire for another two years. We don't really need a succession plan. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. The succession plan that we did in Emporia. Um, was when I took a position um, in Destin, Florida for about four days, and that position um, didn't work. And I came back to Emporia and they took me back. And when that happened, um, we all agreed, not only me, but the board agreed that we needed to have a succession plan because when I said, Hey, I've got a job in Destin, Florida, they all went, No, no, you your director blah 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 so that succession plan really relieves anxiety with the staff it relieves anxiety with the board because there's something on paper there's something that they can look at and it's a tiered situation now you know where you've got an assistant director or a um you know if that person's not there then somebody else steps in but get started on that today there's no reason at all why you can't have a succession plan. i think it helps that those staff know that sorry yes you may want me to be here forever but no <laughs> i can't exactly yeah and this is here's a plan for when that will happen and just remember that to keep that in your mind that someday i will be moving on to something else yes well and our staff see that um our staff see that succession plan i mean we are we're very transparent with our staff we've got 20 people on staff and any policy or any plan that goes to the board goes to our staff as well um, so and, and you can't really have a succession plan without going to the assistant director and saying hey do you want to be next and going to the technical services person and saying hey do you want to be third so yeah. they, they are part of that succession plan i mean it's not just one that the board and the the director sit down and do themselves but uh, again the template helps a ton mm -hmm. um, so think, think about 
to you had mentioned earlier in, in your presentation about uh, how um, being responsible to yourself and what you need to do for you, you are don't feel guilty about leaving your leaving leaving them you know leaving their job you know be you're not responsible for what happens afterwards if you have this succession plan in place you know what will happen and you've got it all planned out and then you're not just like leaving them hanging i think that really helps yeah and, and they feel um they feel comforted and they feel um like you're taking good care of them yeah uh, it, it's it's an empathetic way to um retire uh, mm -hmm. to, to have that plan in place. It's, it's a kinder, it's a kinder, gentler way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so for the transition, um, if you, if you are, and, and I'm going to talk from director here for a minute, but it's really not just for directors. You, I'm going to say develop a building book. Um, if you will go to the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, uh, mm -hmm. website. There is an individual there who does a wonderful job of teaching um, how to develop a building book, and it's my understanding that her resources may be on that website. Um, so that's the Association of Rural and Small Libraries. Mm -hmm. um, I got to give her props. I think I think it's a great book. I I did not um, put that as part of this presentation because it is it is hers um, hers alone but do develop a building book. And I'm talking about where's the cutoff on the gas? You know, how do you turn the water off? Um, who do you call when the toilet overflows? Um, just those kind of things. Um, so that the next person is not walking in blinded. Uh, they have at least something on paper that they can look at. Um, and hopefully that transition book will be the first, one of the first things that they skim um, that first week on the job. Now, the reason I say it not just for directors, you should have documentation for any of your positions, you know, wherever you're at. If you're a, an ILL person, if you're a cataloger, um, you know, wherever you're retiring from, you should have some kind of documentation of, of um, what you do every day or how, you know, if Wednesday is the day that you send the books off on the courier, then that should be in that um, transition notebook. So we do encourage uh, individuals to be cross-trained, um, but we also encourage the, um, the building of a, um, a paper or an online document uh, to, so that individual can, um, that new person can have a clue. Uh, and that's part of the document the daily. Um, don't do so much with um, library directors because it's kind of hard to document the daily because, you know, like what's, what's a normal day like, Robin? It's just like, I have no normal days, but. I do have cyclical things that happen. The board report happens, you know, financial reports happen, we pay the bills. So there, those cyclical things, um, I document more than document the daily um, because my routine, I'm a morning person, so my routine is gonna be different maybe than, and I work from like eight to five. My routine is gonna be different from an, maybe an afternoon or evening person that might come in at 10 and work till six or seven. Um, and again, encourage the transparency and cross-training. This is not a time for people to silo themselves or to have these turf wars about, you know, we're not going to share information. Um, you just need to get over that um, because you want to make sure that the new people that are coming in have what they need to do their job. Purge and prepare. And I can't say that capital P on that purge enough. Um, this is a time to go through whatever it is you have been um, stacking up or putting in file drawers or in the storage room downstairs um, and get rid of it. If you're, if you haven't touched it or you haven't used it and it doesn't need to be archived now, uh, you know, you don't want to toss the stuff that needs to be archived or, or kept uh, for legal purposes, but mm -hmm. get rid of it. Um, do, do the new person a favor and don't, don't make them have to go through your stuff. So you want to purge and prepare for that next um, that next person. Um, so here's another caper saying have a contract with the library to answer questions. Um, again, I can't I can't even contract with Emporia Public Library um, to answer questions after my 60 days. I have to wait until um, after 60 days to even contract with them. Um, but I will have a, a, a written contract to work with that, that library if they so desire. 
um, and I will be paid as a consultant. Um, I don't mind answering small questions, but if it's large questions, it's definitely going to be a consulting thing. But that's that capers date. I can't retire on September 30th and October 5th have somebody call me and say, oh my gosh, Robin, we need you to come in and work with us on this budget. And no, I can't do it. So know your, know your dates. That's what I was going to ask. Can they contact you? But that 60 days goes both directions. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. There's and remember, no that's contact. Kansas. Check your state. Because yeah. I know yeah. all yeah. across check the country today for what it's your rules like are. Krista, I think of it almost like a, non -con a, a no conflict. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. we don't, yeah. So, and it's also a double dip clause. That's why it happened in the first place. Sure. Uh, they had teachers that were retiring and they would retire on um, in May and then they would go back and teach in September, um, which is more, or, you know, was less, it was less than 120 days. Um, and in teachers, and in teachers, you have to have a contract. Look, librarians in Kansas are just at will employees, so there's no contract there. But teachers have contracts, so um, they were seeing people double dipping. They were getting their capers, and they'd just gone right back to work. Um, so there is that time period there that they built into that because of the double dipping. Um, please realize that once you announce your retirement, um, you will be viewed differently by the board and the staff. Um, this one was. This this one was kind of interesting. It was almost like being a lame duck. It's just like, oh, okay, so so no communication, not as much communication, um, and the staff kind of were not happy at first. <laughs> the board wasn't happy at first either. But but they they worked through that, um, and uh, you know that you'll hear things like cheater, you know, quitter, that kind not cheater, but quitter, and and uh, I can't believe you're leaving, you know, what are we going to do, and and just that kind of stuff, all those comments, but um, you just you just smile and nod and, and tell them how wonderful they are, and they're going to do a great job, and, and with the board as well, uh, you know, just reassure them that somebody's going to come in there and, and run that library just as well as you did, if not better. So you will be viewed differently. Your relationship with those individuals will change um, uh, when you announce your retirement. Um, you'll, you'll find that some individuals who you felt like you were close to with a working relationship uh, will not want to continue uh, that as a friendship. Um, and then you'll find others that will absolutely, you know, I want to, I want to stay in touch with you after you retire, Rob. And I, you know, let's, let's, let's go have lunch. Let's, let's go have a drink. Uh, so, so those relationships um, will be different after you um, uh, after you retire. You want to see your librarianship activities to their natural end. Um, now, this one is about um, being on a professional organization. Um, you know, if you're if you're the president of your state organization, you want to try to see that to the end. If you're the um, secretary of a, of a library organization, you want to try to see those activities to their natural end. Um, I I was not able I was able to do that with KLA. I was not Kansas Library Association. I'm past president there. I was not able to do that with the Mountain Plains Library Association where I I, I was the president because we moved from the state in June. And one of the requirements of the Mountain Plains Library Association is you have to live in the uh, 12 state region to be an officer. And uh, we moved to the Gulf Coast, uh, which is certainly not in the, in the Mountain Plains Library uh, area anymore. And I had to resign about halfway through my, um, my term there. Um, but if you can, um, this is one of those, um, you try to do a good job, um, but you also have to think about yourself. Uh, and and for me, it was it was time for me to um, time for me to make that move. So try to see your librarianship activities to their natural end. And your gimme for the day is the transition notebook, which um, I will. It's not on Hoover. Again, didn't take that out, um, but I will send that to Krista, uh, mm -hmm. and she can put that up. This is compliments of retired librarian Chris Ripple. This is a great fill-in-the-blank uh, transition notebook. Um, I've used it 
other people have used it. Um, we Again, it's a great template. It's not everything, nothing is everything, but it is something to work work towards. And, uh, and I've started, um, I've started mine, I don't have it finished yet, but I've got a couple more weeks here. And it's something that you, um, if you're gonna retire in the next year, I would say to wait until you're about six months out um, to start filling it in, because there are some things that, that could change um, in that six month period between um, you starting to fill that out and, the, um, and retiring. So, um, but again, a great place to start and a great place to just, again, skim down through it for yourself and think about what do I need to do before I retire. And this is a transition note, but for the library, not for retiring, but to retire from the library to transition. Yeah. One of my um, one of my library directors that I that had resigned retired about I don't know a year ago. Uh, when I was talking with her, she said this, and and uh, it reminded me of uh, of this picture that I had taken not long ago. But it's lovely on the other side. This is the dock um, that goes out into the bay where we live, and and I, I think about that other side a lot. Um, it is it is definitely a journey and and a path and um, and a lot of excitement and a lot of work. Oh my lack, you know, moving is work um, if you move. Um, but it is lovely on the other side. Don't procrastinate. Um, if you're thinking of retiring, your work is finished when you decide to step away, not when somebody tells you to step away, but when you decide to step away. Get out of the way. Let people do their work. Don't burn bridges. It can be a tough one sometimes. You will have you think you're going to have the luxury of time. Like I said, that six months out, um, time will pass very quickly. Uh, when you decide that you're going to retire and you have a date um, date in your head, um, you will you will find that there's lots of paperwork that has to be done. There's lots of planning that has to be done. Um, just um, it will go very, very quickly. Um, understand as a retiree, you're very competent um, and you will be recruited. People people will know that you have worked in a library. They will know that you um, are smart, uh, they will know that you know how to use your resources, and they will not hesitate to recruit you for everything from service organizations to churches to, um, yeah, just lots of different things. So it's very important for you to learn your boundaries and how to say no. <laughs> um, my husband and I just worked the mullet festival. The mullet is a fish here that they actually throw. Um, but we worked the Optimus Club Mullet Festival this weekend. Uh, we have been looking for a service organization in, in this community to work with, and we just had a wonderful time. But we've also been recruited for a couple of other things, and we've had to say, no, we're still looking, we're still looking. So know what you want to do, know your boundaries, because the other thing I've heard is don't take on too many things. Um, yes. Know your limits. Take um, your time. Start, yeah. If you're going to start consulting, it makes it tough. Uh, but then be a brain trust uh, and think about doing some consulting. Uh, retirement restrictions. Um, I don't know why that came up. Have a clue. Okay. Uh, know that know your dates. Uh, be aware of the five stages of retirement and be prepared to grieve um, after you leave. And then the best is yet to be. Invest more time in friendships, and I heard this again over and over with the people that I um, that I uh, worked with. Here's four books: Pre and Post Retirement Tips for Librarians by Carol Smallwood, Get What's Yours by Lawrence Hawk, yeah, by those authors, and Get What's Yours for Medicare: Ten Costly Medicare Mistakes. These aren't necessarily the the most wonderful, but this is what I found. This is what I used. Uh, the Carol Smallwood but a Smallwood book is a little old and uh, there's a good possibility that someone be, will be writing another one of these um, retirement tips for librarians, but these are great resources for you. Um, thanks to those who have gone or are going on before me. These are the people that I interviewed, Rob Banks in Topeka, Carol Barta in Manhattan, 
Cynthia Berner in Wichita, Roger Carswell in Iowa, Laura in Northeast Kansas, Linda Nup in Manhattan, Gina Millsap at Topeka, Richard Miller from the Nebraska Library Commission. Are there any questions? And these are these are part of my retirement. These are our three littles. We have six grandkids. These are the three <laughs> littles, uh, twins that are four, and uh, Coraline who is five, um, all born within a year. So or, you know, very very close. It was like yeah. So here's my information. If you want to contact me, please do. Um, my phone number still works on that 620-340-6464. I'll be glad to talk to you. I love to visit about libraries and life and retirement and any other any other retire any other library question you might have. And you just want to, to bounce it off of people. But um, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Krista. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we do have some comments. Thank you so much. This is a great session, definitely. I don't know how close I am to retirement yet, but um, it's always in the back of my mind as things go on and on. <laughs> so um, yeah. no matter what age, yeah, where you're at. Um, let's see, we do have a few, some comments. Anybody have any questions? Get them typed in. We, we um, Even though it is we're just 11 o'clock, we did um, start after 11. So we will keep going as long as it takes um, to answer any questions or anything else Robin wants to share. So please do um, type in your questions. Um, I will let people know right now before we get into that, that um, yes, as I said, the show is being recorded. Uh, the recording will be available by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, it's got a process through go to webinar and YouTube, so that should be ready. Um, the slides will also eventually be ready. I'll be available. Um, Robin has some other things she's doing with this presentation, so um, maybe sometime after after the end of this month. Yep, uh, and I will all those to you. Yeah, um, but then the... the uh, this is like the planning guides and things you're going to send. You'll send those right away. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'll we'll have those links. This afternoon. Okay. Perfect. We'll have those linked off of the archive page um, for you right off the bat. Um, so that will all be available. Uh, so we do have some comments. Someone says um, the stages, as listed, the, those five stages, like um, would help me generate a to-do list for each stage. Um, they said that was very oh. neat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, someone says, uh, in re reference to the Medicare issues, that um, her husband is 70 and uses good RX um, instead of paying for Part D, and that that can save money. So there's a tip. Um, I've heard of good RX before, yeah. And uh, someone says, the day to retire equals jubilation day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's a good way to look at it, definitely. And thank you for writing the notebook. Um, thank you for addressing an important topic that is often not often discussed. Um, someone else says, enjoy your retirement. They, I have 11 months left, this the other person does. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. And we did have one uh, question type thing that did come in. So, um, uh, and it's Kind of a more of a general question. She wants to know, um, do you have any guidance or thoughts to share if someone wants to start start the transition to later retirement by moving from a higher stress career to a less demanding career? Um, so thoughts about other jobs that use information and communication skills. So this would be needed work that would still allows the employee employee to earn enough of a living without using retirement savings yet. So they want to stop doing what they're doing now and still have another job. But not in libraries is that what probably I'm yes or something in that that would use those skills that we have like um, a, a I would, gradual retirement or a tiered retirement i don't know <laughs> um so so my sister right now she's um she's turned 65 in january and she or next january she will go she'll go part-time at her business um, and so there's there's a possibility that if you're if you're looking for um that same amount of uh, salary, I would look at the skill set you have, and then I would get out there and start looking um, at job postings and see what other skill sets match up, um, and then start applying for those positions. Um, you know, I I've often thought a library, a public library director, could probably be a nursing home administrator. Um, as far as I, you know, I, you don't have to know the medical, but you have to know the administration and you have to know people and you have to know the public. Um, so I, I, I think that's, uh, uh, that's the same type of uh, thought process that this individual would need to go through. They would need to think about 
what type of environment do I want to work in? And then what, what transferable skills? And if they're looking at doing something like that, I mean, I don't think it's ever too early to start um, looking at job postings and, and talking with other individuals that, that work in those positions. Um, yeah. and, seeing, mm -hmm. and sometimes retiring isn't, this is the end of my job career, my job life. <laughs> it's um, sometimes people retire and you mentioned going back, you know, getting bored and going back. You know, it could be your first retirement. You're retiring from this career but gonna go into something else because exactly. you just you are still you, you know young enough to be able to do that and um you know you said what you're someone 90 years old still going strong <laughs> you yeah. can't still continue working it's just you're retiring from the current thing you're in and maybe you will just go to something else yeah exactly and and again we saw that a lot with with the boomers we had a lot of boomers start retiring at 50 55 um yeah. my husband could have retired at 55 with his points in the school system but um then what uh so so a lot of people did go into second careers but yeah you just need to think about again these are your choices and you can make yourself over um and go for it yeah. and, and a lot of people do go into consulting they do become that that brain trust and then you know put their card out there and say you know i can do leadership development for your church um i can do you know that type of thing so yeah that's a, that's a good tip too that consulting creating your own kind of little business and um i've seen lots of people do that i don't know i no longer want to be right in the library world but i want i still want to help those people doing that so i will come and do consulting for them i will do presentations for them on things on professional development or whatever but i don't want to be running a library anymore that's uh, i'm over with i'm over that <laughs> but i still love the field and i love the work they do and i have got what you talk about the institutional knowledge and the history of how things can be done and the experience and the expertise and I can pass that on to other people in this way instead of being actually in the middle of running an actual library right and even something like trustee training which I we do we do trustee orientation for all of our all of our new board members and a lot of library directors are like I don't know how to do that it's like well you just call me and I'll come in and train you know what I'm saying I mean there's lots like you said it's the institutional knowledge is the experience given forward that we have the opportunity to do as retirees so yeah um, all right well i didn't see any other new questions come in while we were chatting that's fine uh just another comment that i missed earlier the the the, the uh title of your presentation uh, retirement time to ease on down ease on the road um now that song is stuck in my head for the day thanks <laughs> <laughs> and i said and same that's it. Yeah. That's okay. I'll be humming it along. And people go, Where did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, it's you wouldn't even believe. <laughs> but that's Thank okay. Everybody. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like there's any other desperate questions. There is Robin's contact info um, up until the end of this month. <laughs> um, and so if you do have any questions, comments, if you want to talk to her about reach out to her there. Um, yeah, so I think we will wrap it up. Uh, thanks so much, Robin. I was glad I was able to have you on the show before you do retire. As I said, Robin was here in Nebraska previously. Uh, good luck with your retirement. I hope you have an easy time of it. I'm sure you've planned <laughs> appropriately. So, and I will put my new contact information on that slide as well before I send it to you. So. Okay, great. So then, yeah, right after this, when we get the slides, you'll be able to reach out to her personally too. And not a problem. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm going to pull presenter control to my screen to wrap up. And uh, there we go. There it is. Um, and bring you to our main Encompass Live page to show you where our archives are, as I said. Um, this is our main Encompass Live page. Uh, if you just go, use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, the name of the show, we're the only thing called that on the internet. No one else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> These are our upcoming shows, but our archives it, links is right here. Here's all of our archives. Today's show will be at the top of the page. As I said, by the end of the day tomorrow, I'll um, have it up here at the very latest. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, even if you weren't able to attend live, you'll get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Um, we will also push out on our various social media. We have a Facebook page if you like to use Facebook. We post reminders of um, here to you know, log in for today's show, information about our presenters, but we also do post when our recordings are ready. So I will post up here and we use the NCUMP live little abbreviation as a hashtag out on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram. Uh, 
I'll also show you here, this is our full show archives. We have a search feature here. If you want to search for any other uh, particular topic, see if we've done a show on a topic, you can search the sh full show archives or just most recent 12 months if you want something very current. And that is because this is our full archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom. As you can see, this is a huge list. Um, but this does go back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was January 2009. So we have going like 12 something years of recordings here. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything you watch. If it is, um, some things will stand the test of time, be still good, useful information, but some information will become old and outdated and no longer be accurate or pages and resources might not exist anymore or might not work anymore. All right, so that wraps up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, um, Robin. Um, I hope you join us next week. Um, we'll be talking about Reader Zone. This is a um, uh, program that can be used for tracking reading, like summer reading programs or any sort of reading events you have. Um, we have a statewide subscription for this for our Nebraska libraries. So we'll, we, we've renewed that for the next year. Um, so Jake Ball, the founder of Reading Zone, will be here to talk about that. Uh, but it is something if your library is interested in, we highly recommend that we, we do. We do great with it. our libraries like it. So um, sign up for that if you want to hear about that or any of our other upcoming shows. Thank you, everybody, and hope we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>